So I've been talking to thousands of entrepreneurs over the last uh, decade, and over and over when I talk to somebody who's building a cool mobile location app, they say, uh, they t tell me about Factual. Factual's the company underneath Yelp and TripAdvisor and on and on and on. And uh, you'll see them on lots of iPhone apps. Their data is underneath lots of iPhone apps, I should say. And we're gonna find out what that new location world is all about and what, what's behind this company that you really don't know much about but is underneath all these cool apps. We're gonna find out about it right now. Who are you? My name is Gil Elbaz. I'm the founder and CEO of Factual. We're very happy to be here to talk about our location data platform, the data layer we've created that, like you mentioned, is an enabler of a, of a large number of, of iPhone apps. And, and we're now we're moving into helping uh, publishers, developers, ad tech with, with mobile personalization. Let's talk about you first of all. You have a history of doing startups and in this world, why did you get into this? Well, it's the data. I've always been a, a crazy data nut. I mean, from way before I had, I even knew what a computer looked like in the, in the 70s, I was just addicted to streams of information. I would sit there charting and graphing it just because I knew, I think I inherently felt that there's a power in information. And so over the course of my career, I, you know, I, I, I moved toward working in IT and, and eventually started Applied Semantics, which was building an ontology of all the concepts, meanings, words in language. And um, it, that worked out. That worked out. Uh, we built AdSense. Uh, we became part of Google in 2003. And today, it's just really building on this desire for information to be accessible, good, structured information, that it should be just a, a direct, seamless relationship where a developer can find what they need. They can integrate it. You don't have trouble with with complicated contracts in terms of service and complex pricing menus. I, we just want it to be really easy. I think if I was going to be an entrepreneur, I'd, I'd be a database guy too because I, I did lots of conferences for programmers and database sessions were always the biggest and most consistently uh, hot sessions. Um, so it, first of all, let's talk about what Factual used to be before last week because <laughs> you announced a new product line. Right. You're the, you, own, you have a database of millions of restaurants and businesses all around the world and companies like, like if, I was buy, if I was starting something like a food spotting or Foursquare, I'd probably come to you and say, I need help building uh, the database that will show up on my app, right? Is, right? is that sort of what you guys are doing? Yeah, so if you're building a location-based app, the first thing you need is the location data so that when somebody is doing a search, within a neighborhood, or if you're at a point, uh, if you're at a lat long, if you're at a location, and you want to know what's near you, the first thing you need to know is a list, a database of all of the places in the world. And that's, and that's what we've built. Uh, and historically, companies would try to curate and build this data themselves. But it's a really big task, especially if you're going to go global, if you're really trying to be a global service provider. And there's so many other important things to do. There's, there's the UI. There's there's the, the, the whole social web and, and connecting and integrating. I mean, there's a million other things to do, monetization. So this has really resonated with developers that this is one thing that they shouldn't try to do themselves. They can simply plug into our API and use something that, that's already there waiting for them. So if I'm starting a new Google Glass app that's going to use location, I'm going to, for instance, I might want to ask it just for sushi restaurants, mm -hmm. right? What do I need to know as a developer to deal with factual and get that data into my glass or into my iPhone or whatever? Well, you need to, to, to get used to, get comfortable with our data schema. It's, it's very standard. Uh, and so it, it shouldn't be a, a challenge for you, but you just have to understand the schema, understand the different drivers we have to make the call. So you know, it's a RESTful call or drivers for, for a dozen different languages. Uh, it's really pretty simple. I mean, people get started very quickly. It's amazing, for example, to see these hackathons, how people are able to build something pretty compelling um, you know, over, over a long weekend. So um, where's the world moving to now? I, I, I noticed you're, yeah. you, well, tell me what you just announced that last week. Yeah, uh, last week at the uh, Venture Beats Mobile Beat conference, we announced two new products, Geopulse Proximity and Geopulse Audience. 
So these products build upon our deep location data capability and help companies, uh, we enable companies to bring more personalization and contextual relevance to their apps. Uh, this also applies uh, well to, to ad tech that's trying to bring more targeted apps uh, to, to more targeted ads, I'm sorry, to, uh, to their ecosystems. The way the product works is they give us access to, to a history of lat longs per user. This is a, a private, uh, protected sort of relationship so this data doesn't leak anywhere else. And we simply process these lat longs that they've collected and develop a user profile that will tell them things like uh, behavioral segments like do they like coffee houses? How often do they travel? Are they a business traveler? But also demographic segments and, and geographic segments where, where, where they spend time. Does this data come off of manual check-ins, like a Foursquare style mm -hmm. check-in where I go to the Ritz and Half Moon Bay and check in? Mm -hmm. Or is it just tracking, right. uh, tracking behavior that I as a user under, uh, turned on? Sort of like uh, Google Latitude used to do where I would just, uh, it, it would say, oh, you're at the Ritz and it would automatically tell the system I'm there, right? Right, so that's completely between the app developer and their own users. So we don't get in the way of that. And so from app to app, they may or may not uh, store it on a regular basis or they might only store it when, uh, when you are checking in. Um, either way, this is information that these apps can use to better customize their products because they can know things about you like where you've been before so they can maybe bring you a loyalty program so that you'll come back. Uh, and this is generally, we believe that this tracking is something that's really good for users in the age of context, where you want, you want customization, you want this technology to know you. Um, we're just augmenting that and helping these companies do a technical piece of the puzzle that they don't always have the resources to do them themselves, which is map location to, to user profile. No, this is really a, a key, key piece. Other, other companies are tracking like uh, exercise, you know, like Fitbit knows right. how many steps I've taken today, right? Um, other companies are tracking. Uh, I think Google's going to have a contextual OS within the next year and a half mm -hmm. where it actually knows that you were driving or running or skiing or shopping. And then other companies mm -hmm. like, uh, like the ones you, you deal with, Yelp and so forth, know where, what restaurants I've been to and, and what places I've been to, what mm -hmm. parks I go to. And then I could build a new kind of app that is very personalized and very custom right. and very predictive and assistive, right? Right, I think there's just so many opportunities for this context to help people. Now there's a lot of things that people find important and useful, like social and connecting with people and finding, either saving money and finding the right coupon at the right time, or discovery and finding uh, just the right place that's playing the music that you like, or the, the baseball game that you're interested in. Um, but then it goes just so far beyond that. I mean, I think it's gonna have a massive impact on healthcare and to, to be able to help people diagnose issues way before you, you even know that they're coming and to, to help you know, mitigate the, kind of your, the, the way you live your life. Um, I just think that there's a tremendous, tremendous opportunity. Yeah. Right now, it's one of your partners is gonna feed this data to you. You're gonna process it and give a profile mm -hmm. back and then bring um, lots of connections to the right. places that the, you know, cause you know if I went to a Safeway you, your database knows that Safeway is a, a grocery store and has certain attributes to it. Right. How many attributes per business are you tracking, by the way? Right. There's, I think there's 17 core attributes, things like the category of the business, the contact information, the location, the website. Okay. Um, on top of that, we have our crosswalk, which maps a business to all the other services that a developer tends to be interested in. So Foursquare, uh, Twitter, Facebook, we try, we try to keep updated this, this very large mapping from 66 million businesses to, uh, to several dozen services out there, which helps, helps the developer stitch in other services. Um, finally, for certain categories like restaurants, we have another 45 attributes, you know, everything from average price to the chef to uh, specific cuisine types that are offered. This is pretty crazy. Uh, you know, I, we're clearly heading into an age where we're just gonna talk to our devices right. and we're gonna say, okay, Glass, find me a sushi restaurant or find me a, a bathroom or find me a, you know, a, a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna know what our behavior has been. That mm -hmm. I go to Starbucks, not Pete's, or right. I go to Pete's, not Starbucks. Right. And it's gonna present those in a new way. Where else do you, what, what else do you see happening in the next five years in terms of these databases? Because they're getting pretty crazy as to what they're mm -hmm. tracking about us and tracking about the world we're walking through. 
Yeah, so I mentioned, um, I mentioned the, the health, I think predictive health yeah, is, is really interesting. I think Yelp recently was spearheading this uh, open source uh, project to, to bring together standardized information from the, the, all the health rating bureaus, restaurant yeah. health rating bureaus from, uh, from different cities, which today uh, have different protocols and, and different data backends. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot there. Um, I mean, I think the whole, the whole field of anticipatory computing is, is pretty, is pretty trem tremendous. There's a company I, I invested a little bit in called, um, called Expect Labs yeah. uh, that's been talking about their product, uh, MindMeld, and uh, he, you know, he, he, may, he may have been coined this buzzword, anticipatory computing. Google Now is an incredible example yeah. of, of a, effectively a search engine that, that figures out what you want before you do. Uh, and, and even if it's not figuring out exactly what you want, at least it's a, a able to apply a tremendous amount of context. So if you ask a question, it knows how to, how to best answer. Um, yeah, I think, I think what MindMeld is doing with listening to a conversation and uh, bringing relevant information up on an iPad that's sitting in front of you is an, is an example of something that's, uh, that's really powerful. Yeah, we had them on the show, and it's, it is incredible. I, yeah. I can't wait to get that. Um, can, we, can we see what sort of what your database looks like to a developer? What, what attributes? Show me sort of what a developer could see. Sure. Um, yeah, that might be helpful. Yeah, so as a data backend company, uh, it's not like we're focused on the on the fancy UIs, but we do have some demos that make it easy for a developer to understand the data we have. So yeah. if you if you come to our site, uh, the the main section up toward the top is um, the, the global location data. If we go to global places, we get an overview of all the countries we cover. Um, for me, and for many people, the most exciting thing is to drill directly into exploring the data. And we're m much more transparent than a lot of companies out there in that we show all of the granular data in all of its glory for you to assess and decide what you like. Um, and once you've gotten, you've become comfortable with the data, then you can sign up for our API and, 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 and do your integration. So here we have 67 plus million places if we do a quick search. Uh, a full text search on sushi. We have 198,000 plus. We go down to the bottom right and look at localities. Uh, I can't read these. Uh, most the these are facets. The cities where that have the most sushi restaurants. Yep. Let's click into U.S. in order to. Now we can see there's 379 in New York, 163 in San Francisco. So we can drill down there, and and now we. Uh, we have all the information here. Let's Could click you, on one. Yeah, click on one of these. Now you know the lat long of that location, and you, you know all all the stuff. You've also collected all these reviews and things people have said about the sushi restaurant. Give me a sense of, of what your advice would be to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. How do they better prepare themselves for the next wave of apps right. and things coming? How do, how do they get found by these databases? So we don't see that specifically as our role. We work with a lot of companies, take Yex, for example, whose uh, role is to work with SMBs and help make sure their data is accurate and help them get found. Um, but we would certainly urge any, any, any business to just make sure that the information about themselves is correct. They can do that, they can do that directly by, by finding themselves on our site. So here, um, here not only do you have the, the core attributes at the top for the sushi place, um, some detailed extended attributes in the middle, and then all these crosswalks. So it's also, it's also convenient to have links to all the other places on the web where, where you should be found and where your information should be accurate. Yep. Um, you know, we, we, we know where the errors are in, in these other sites, but we don't, it's not our business to, to highlight those, and we, we leave that for a lot of our partners that do a great job of... Uh, of making very usable tools to help uh, a small business or a restaurant uh, manage their online presence. Let, let's say I wanted to, because Google Glass is going to be, be interesting because it's going to know where I'm looking. So I want to say, right. show me uh, what, what's across the street. What, what re mm -hmm. If I walk that way, what four restaurants could I go right. toward? Could I build that kind of app using your database? Because I know where I am. Mm -hmm. I know where I am in, in geospace. Right. Homesnaps is an mm -hmm. app that sort of does this, right? You take a picture of a house right. and it shows you how much the house is worth. Right. And it doesn't have anything to do with the camera. It just built right. a, a geo or a, a, 
a plot of land and it knows what plot of land you're looking mm -hmm. at and looks it up on the database and gives you an answer. Right. Could I build that kind of app with Factual yeah. or do I need yeah. yet another partner? Or I, so Google Glass uh, ha has, has your location or I'm not sure if it has your location or gets it through the Bluetooth, Bluetooth connection with your phone. Both. Okay, yeah. both. Yeah. Okay. So either way, it has your lat long. It knows your orientation and it, know, it knows the direction you're looking at. Um, so you can, you can do a search for, uh, you can do a lat long search on Factual but within a, a vicinity. You can start very granular. Um, with our new product, with Proximity, you can also do polygon searches. Uh, and, and what you're doing is, is narrowing down to a, a, a defined area and figuring out what's there. And, and because we've coded, encoded all these places with, uh, with lat longs, um, that, that search uh, is extremely fast. And so you can integrate that via our API, get an answer back in, in 10 to 20 milliseconds. Are you thinking about indoor mapping? Because if I'm looking at a mall, there's lots of places in the, in the mall, and it's hard to put that on a GPS um, lookup, right? Are you thinking about how to make that work better when I'm in the mall and say, hey, find me the chocolate, right. the chocolate shop inside the mall? We are working to make sure that all the locations within the mall are properly geocoded, so that they're not all assigned to the front door of the mall, which sometimes happens with databases, so we're, we're definitely, we've put a lot of effort into that. In terms of figuring out where you are in the mall, sometimes being in a mall blocks your GPS signal, and that's where indoor mapping is really important in those technologies that can use either Wi-Fi or other, other, other uh, NFC capabilities to, to, to figure out where you are. That, that's gonna be important. One of our partners that's working on the, the, these NFC uh, proximity capabilities is um, Qualcomm that, that provides the Snapdragon chips for uh, a large number of the mobile devices we use. Now, now they're figuring out that they can add even more value with their proximity solutions um, to help people um, not just uh, track their own location, but in a very controlled way, share it with, with app developers and, and build really robust capability for, uh, for geofencing. Are you thinking about uh, commerce or transactions with the, any of these restaurants? Because you know, Open Table certainly has a relationship with a lot of high-end restaurants, mm -hmm. but I'm going to want to, to order a beer while mm. sitting at the at the Ritz, right? Mm. And I can't today because there's not the infrastructure mm. inside the inside the restaurant to do that. Are, are you thinking about how else you could grow your business into other places because you have this data and you know right. more about the world than anybody else? I mean, all that use case is is really exciting, and I, and I've heard of other companies figuring out how to do uh, point of sale automation. Um, as, as you know, companies like Square are, are, are disrupting and making it that much easier to have this deep engagement with customers, right? Uh, where, wherever you happen to be standing as a salesperson, and uh, like Apple does at their stores. Yeah. Um, so we work with these companies, but we're very focused on being a tech layer and tech provider to, to other developers, um, to, to that tech development community. Uh, we don't want to go after consumers. We don't have to go, go after small businesses. There's so, so many other outfits that are, 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 that their core DNA is around providing those solutions. What kind of technology is Factual run on top of? Today we use, we use HDFS and, and Hadoop and HBase, that, that whole stack, to store a tremendous amount of data because of the capability to process the, uh, the terabytes of data we have very quickly sharded, uh, parallelized. Um, we, we also use some of the other open source database. Uh, like uh, like Mongo, um, I was I had mentioned to you before that um, when we started working on this in 2007, the, these products weren't mature, and we 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 were trying to build our own thing, and we got pretty far along. But but today, it just it just makes absolute sense to to leverage these uh, these tremendous NoSQL databases uh, that are that are available. We also um, uh, we we have our we have a data center, and we we we, we leverage cloud as well. Yeah. What's the challenge for you for the next year, 18 months? What, what are you thinking about when you wake up in the morning? You know, what, what's got you going or, or got you worried about? Is it Google coming into this and just t doing the same thing? No, it's actually great when Google, in some cases where they're out ahead, for example with Google Now, that they're kind of showing the industry what's possible. Uh, I, I love it when you know, a leading company shows the rest of the industry that we're not done. We're not done with search. We've barely scratched the surface. There's so much more to do. And really, there's an opportunity now for, for new startups to, to choose new verticals where they can, can bring in new kinds of context and, and help people make, make better decisions. Uh, there's so many silos of data that, that are yet to be stitched together. We have one big vertical in location data that we're, 
we're making much more open, but there's so many others that will take work to get, uh, acquire, and then and stitch together, and, and, and it, it creates a lot of opportunities. If you were 20 year old, years old right now, what would you be uh, doing as a business? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. I mean, I think all the factual things. would be done. Somebody did factual. So <laughs> do you see opportunities springing out that, that are open right now that aren't, aren't uh, are on the table? I mean, we're not doing, I, I, I'm, I'm wowed by the, the whole uh, sensor community. And I was just learning about uh, the Kickstarter project, the Misfit wearable, for example, and, and of, of course you have Fitbit that's done tremendously. All these companies that are collecting additional information from you. Um, I think in the future, people will be able to stitch this together with much more of your other data, and it will become even more powerful. But even, even today in the first inning, it's, it's, it's really amazing what you can learn about yourself. Thank you so much. Uh, we get more information at factual.com, right? Factual.com, that's thanks, right. Thanks so much for thanks. coming in. I could talk to you for hours because you're at the center of the eye of the storm of this new location, mobile, uh, contextual world that's, that I'm excited by. So, thank you. More data. Thanks. Thanks very much. Appreciate it, Robert.